Hello everyone, I thought it was time I redid my PMDG 737 CDU programming tutorial. So this video is just going to cover getting up to the point where you're ready for departure. And then I'll do another one on departure and uh, how you can handle things during the flight. But the main chunk for people to learn is going to be set up because there's quite a bit to do and program. So we're going to talk about uh, creating a sim brief plan, reading from that sim brief plan and programming it into your PMDG 737 using Microsoft. So you've downloaded Microsoft Flight Sim. Great. What do you do next? Well, assuming you've got Narration on and you have configured your options, so you need to go into Options, you need to go into Assistance Options, you need to make sure all of those are off. Um, and can, uh, you know, uh, considering that you've programmed your, hopefully, your graphics options and uh, set everything up for your personal tastes, you're now ready to load in to a plane. So. Microsoft Flight Simulator 1, 3, 3, Here we are on the main menu. So the first thing we need to do is go to the world map. So the easiest way, and the cursor does jump around sometimes, is to go down. And I'm not sure why the narration is so quiet. Master Flight Simulator, 18%. I'll turn it up here. 92 96%. Okay, so down and then to the right. So down arrow and then to the right. And you get to world map. Hit enter on that. Flying in Boeing 737 to 700 from select departure runway. So we're in select the 737 700, and the very first thing, if you arrow to the left, is indeed aircraft flight. selection. We can hit enter on that, and it brings up a grid of aircraft. So we can arrow to the left and right. You've got a search bar at the top, and if we go down into the grid, you've got a grid. So we can go to the right there you heard 737-600, now we're on the 700. 737 BDSF. And then you get to the edge of the grid which is the filter. Let's go down another line. It's the 900. Boeing 737 to 800 BDSF cruise speed. Boeing 7 so you can see we're continuing to go. To now left. Boeing they do go in order. There's the 737 So we'll hit enter on that. And we'll hit escape to get out of that dialogue. If we go back to the right. We are on the... You'll see, the, see what I mean about the cursor jumping. It jumped to the bottom. Put us on the uh, zoom buttons. So we'll just arrow up and we land on flight conditions. That's actually on the right side. If we arrow back to the left, you've got select arrival. Left again. Switch departure and arrival. Again, select departure. We're going to hit that. And we're going to type in KJFK and hit enter. And we're going to arrow down once. KJFK forward slash Kennedy International. Kennedy International, that's the first one on the list, that's what we want. KJFK International New York. And from that point, we can load into the sim. Now you can uh, do various other things. You can uh, go here and set your arrival if you want. Uh, you can then go in and choose whether you want to be high altitude airways. You can even load the PLM file into the simulator. But uh, you don't need to do all that in the PMDG unless you want to fly with Microsoft Default ATC, which as good as it can be, is not very helpful because it doesn't really give you, uh, you know, vectors that work properly on approaches. So I wouldn't recommend it. But you can experiment with that at your leisure. Now we're just going to load in and uh, program the FMC and uh, do all our checklists. So. Now we've chosen our departure airport, we can just hit Control enter which will automatically hit the fly button which is kind of down at the bottom area 
and it'll automatically hit that for us. So we'll hit Control Enter. And you can hear the soundscape changes. And we are uh, loading in. And it will start reading the loading values. If you are using a PMDG aircraft for the first time, it's perfectly normal for it to take quite a while to load. Uh, it can take 5-10 minutes depending on your computer. That is normal, but as you'll see here, it should take about maybe 20-30 seconds to load up. Um, there we go, we're ready to go. Now this confuses people, but right now we are not in the aircraft. We are in a cinematic view of our aircraft. So you have landed on a ready to fly button, which you are going to just hit enter on. And that will load you into the plane and you can hear since we're in the cold and dark state, we are shutting down. The engines are shutting down and the systems are. And I'm using a sound pack if you're wondering why it maybe sounds slightly different to yours. And if you want to go to the outside view, you can hit the end key. See we're in the outside view, not much going on. If you want to move around with the view, you can hit control and the arrows. So if there was aircraft around on VATSIM or something, you might hear them moving around your uh, position. But that is again for another day. So we'll go end again, back in the cockpit. Okay, now. We did not choose a gate when we chose the departure airport, and that was on purpose because that dialogue is a pain, in my opinion. So, much easier is just to load in, and we are now on an active runway. Do not you know, connect to VATSIM, not that you would be if you're watching this video, but uh, do not just stay here and set up your aircraft or anything like that. We're going to go to a gate. So, first thing we need to do is set the parking brake. If you have your parking brake on simple, you can simply uh, hit the brakes uh, key that you have assigned. Uh, I have um, control period assigned to set and release and then uh, period assigned to actually push down the brake pedals. Um, it may be the num uh, lock key for you, but you can assign keys as you wish um, in the keyboard manager, although that can be rather difficult. But it might be good now, after you load it in, at least if you have a joystick, to just press the buttons and see what they do. Um, you know, you'll figure out that you've got a throttle. Um, you'll figure out that you've got some buttons um, that might move the flaps. There you go. You can hear the flap levers. There you go. Uh, because I'm pressing my flap buttons, uh, you might figure out you've got a gear lever switch. You can hear that move that the gear lever, um, not that the gear went anywhere of course, uh, you'll find you've got a, a speed brakes uh, lever if you've got a honeycomb, you've obviously got your throttles, so just play around and figure out what everything does. But we are going to set the brakes, so you're going to hold down your period key or whatever the brake uh, function is assigned to, and then you're going to hit control period, uh, so I held down the brake pedal which is my period and then control period to actually set the brakes because that's my set and release hotkey. Um, so now we have done that. The next thing we're going to do is load talking flight monitor. Loading airport database. And you can download that and of course from the website. Zero. Zero. Going to detail on every single program I use. It would take way too long. Got to use a bit of your own initiative and find these programs. But I'll assume you've got Talking Flight Monitor. Microsoft Flight. And then you will need to build your airport database. So again, I'm not going to go into full tutorials on this, but you've got to have Make Runways downloaded, uh, which is a program uh, from the uh, creators of FSUIPC. Uh, you've got to put that in a location of choice and run it to build the airport database. And then you go right bracket control comma to open TFM. TFM settings settings panel. Username, bin map, and settings categories. After you've filled all this out, which again, I'm not going through all the settings here, that's not the purpose of this video. 
you can put your geo name, choose a name okay, in, cancel, settings, etc. Output, one, one level, timing, um, you can adjust five, your timing. Five, five, so, for example, in the, the interval flight following announcements, in seconds, ILS announcements. Airports database one level zero. One you want to go to is airports database. Database path available plus select browse. Airports database 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 Contingency fuel, fuel factor set cost, cruise headline, aircraft, aircraft, infantry departure, alternating level, arrive, heading level 2. Depart heading level 2, flight number, heading level 2. Airline heading level 2. Our fields at the top. Flight info, heading level 1. Flight info. Link close flight. And there's links just above the flight info. Link in flight. Close, share flight. new, Clickable share, flight. share Clickable save, generate, flight. generate. We're going to hit generate. Generating flight plan, dialogue processing infinity sec. Clickable cancel button. Generating flight plan, button cancel. And it's going to generate our briefing. Simply flight briefing there document. Go. And it's generated. Okay. Departure heading, aircraft heading level 2, alternating level. Now, departure heading level two. No we'll look through that in a minute, but the next thing we should do is download our flight plan. Desktop list, S, search everything, 19S, SimArchive 31S, SimSounds shortcut for that, SimBrief download, 35. And for that, I'm going to find it, here we go, we're going to use SimBrief downloader. SimBrief. 
Now I have mine automatically set to save the plan. That's why it's asking if we're administrator privileges. We'll just scroll down and say continue. If yours isn't automatically set, then you just need to come in here and you'll see latest flight plan in my case. Okay. And then you just hit export right there. If it doesn't appear, hit the refresh button. Now, what paths do you need? Very good question. We're going to use NVDA find function with control NVDA. And it immediately puts me to the first uh, option here, which is the 747 when I'm interested. PMDG flight plan. Download directory number one. Now my first directory is going to be for C3D. So we'll go past that. Download directory, select directory, clickable, 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 Please select a directory edit C. So as you can see, users. it goes C, users, Declan. in my case Declan, your profile, whatever your name is. Updater. Updater. Local. Local. Packages. L. Backslash. Local backslash packages. Microsoft. Flight Simulator. And then Microsoft. Flight Simulator. Local state. E. Which is obviously quite a long, L. you know, uh, um, section. Local state. Local state. Packages. Packages. PM. DG. PMDG. Aircraft. Uh, aircraft. C-R-A-F-T. Dash. Seven. Three eight. Backslash. And then it's uh, dash seven three eight. As I say, replace that number. Backslash. W. Backslash. Backslash. Flight plans. Seven hundred flight plans. Backslash. Backslash. F. Flight plans. Um, it should automatically detect that. If you use a very useful tool called Search Everything, for example, you can easily find those kind of paths by just typing in flight plans, and it'll find the flight plans folder. So you paste that in there, make sure that's in before you go exporting. Okay. And if you need to add a new directory, there's an add button right there. And keep going because there is another file we need to export. PMDG Windup Link. These are, or oh, this is the, uh, the, the wind file, the WX file, which contains your winds to tell the FMC what it's going to be. Like in terms of the conditions at each waypoint. Download directory number one. So again, select a directory at sea. Program files. Click on my P3D directory and show you my Microsoft directory. Select a directory at sea. Use the update to local packages. Microsoft download directory. Users. So again, see users. Update to local packages. Microsoft flight simulator. Microsoft flight simulator. Local state. PM. Packages again. PMTG. Aircraft. Seven three eight. Three seven three eight. Backslash. Backslash work. WX. And then WX. There is a WX there. Again, it should automatically uh, pick it up. Again, if you're struggling to find it, it's pretty much in the same folder as flight plans, although it's going to go in the WX folder. And then you can go back up to the top, page up a few times, here we go, and we go, you can hit export. So you've got your flight plan files in place, and once you've saved those paths the first time in this Simbrief downloader, you won't have to keep doing it again. New notification from Simbrief downloader. We'll get rid of it, we don't need it anymore. For flows and checklist grouping, free FLT flow button. And we can also company uh, support configuration. Well, let's actually see. First officer might automatically pull the Simbri flight plan. It should do that. Um, there are buttons in here. If you hit the Alt key, you've got restart configuration, which is your flight plan support, support company buttons. And if you go to buttons and hit anyone on that, you've got some more buttons: connect, voice, pause. If you don't have it set to auto connect, you will need to hit connect. Mine does, and that is something you can change in your user.dat config, Flows and checklist which you will have downloaded KLS from button. BVI. Load aircraft slash buttons. Or you will have made yourself Preview. either way. Before start, free FLT, CH, KLS, button, now, FLT flow button. Edit right on it. Flows and checklist grouping, free FLT flow button. We're now ready to start the pre flight flow, so we'll hit pre flight flow. And if we want to see what he's doing, we can use screen review, screen review flow, start, down to the bottom. Flow, before start, taxi CA flow. Before start, CH messages, set POSN and PRGMRT messages, set POSN and PRGMRT E. So he's setting POSN, he's setting the position in the FMC in a minute. Set FMS pref data. This is what he's got to do. MSGCLR, set FMS pref data. Set M, uh, FMS pref data. MSGCLR, check fuel and payload. Set SID and star. 
set of sudden star. So these are all the items he's going to perform. But you can see what he's doing right now is turning the battery on. If we keep going down, you'll see what he's actually doing right at this second, which is waiting for the aircraft to energize. 82 seconds. We can hold Control and Alt to skip that because the aircraft is already energized. The battery is already on. AC bus, ground FPC number one on. AC and bus, then he ground goes ahead and turns ground power on. Left master caution light on. Right master caution light on. IRS mode light. Set FMS press data. Set POS. And he's just uh, set our IRS switch to the alignment position. Light and light now on. we start the fire Left fire bell light. test. Master volume down. Flight semi, cable on. Flight semi, 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 80%. 
Oh, okay. Simply level two cruise profile CI sixty one. And we've got a cost Star index of C I six one. one. Without going into too much detail, the cost index essentially manages the fuel um, to kind of performance ratio of the aircraft. So a lower cost index means a lesser a cost for the airline in terms of fuel used, um, but you might be a little bit slower. That's a very basic description. There's a lot more to it and a bunch of complicated formulas involved in calculating the output. So you would have to go and watch some more detailed videos. I'm not getting into that again. We could be here for hours while I talk at you. So we're just doing the basics. Route distance 254 AM. Route distance is 254 nautical miles. Useful to know. We don't actually need it. Though. Average wind 215/40. Average wind is 215/40. That means 215 knots. Of uh, sorry, 215 degrees um, is where the wind's coming from at 40 knots. Uh, again, we don't need that information. We could use it to insert the winds into the FMC manually, but we've got that wind uplink file that we downloaded, and that's sort of going to be uh, more accurate anyway, so we don't really care about that. Uh, the wind component uh, is uh, essentially talking about the wind shift and uh, strength and I'm not going to get into that again. You don't need it. Isa deviation, ISA deviation again. You're not going to need Heading that. Release, one. Don't worry about it. Again, it, all these, all these, these things. If you want to know what they are, just look it up or you know, look at some real world pilot videos. There's a bunch of them. But again, I'm not going into all this stuff. It's too much, and you don't need Heading it. Two, cycle, Shows you the Eric cycle you want. So make sure that matches Eric cycle 2307. Hopefully, you have uh, got a Navigraph hub installed. If you haven't, I would recommend uh, getting a Navigraph subscription. You don't need one, you can set your Simbrief account to an older ARAG, but I'd highly recommend uh, uh, using a navigation cycle that's up to date, especially if you plan to kind of get invested in Flight Sim and maybe use networks like VATSIM. So you can go in ahead and get the, uh, the Navigraph subscription. You don't need the full one with the charts, you just need the Navigraph FMS data subscription. Um, and then you can use Navigraph Hub to download and install all of the uh, ARAG cycles for Microsoft Flight Sim for the BMDG and they're all just installed. It's very simple. It'll scan and then you just hit the update buttons on all your items. So I'm assuming you've done that. OFP layout, Lido. OFP layout is Lido or Lido. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's essentially how your operational flight plan will be laid out. Um, you can change it in Simbrief. Um, to suit your needs or more importantly kind of if you're trying to replicate real airline or ops you know different airlines do use different formats for their operational uh, flight plans. Heading level two units LBS. Units LBS so we are in pounds uh, the PMBG will come by default in pounds so I recommend using pounds you can go in kilogra uh, kilograms though if you'd Heading like. Level two, navlog, yes. navlog yes so it, it does have a, a navlog um, which is not really too relevant but Heading anyway. Two, no. e tops. No, uh, I'm not even going to go into what ETOPS are. That is again not relevant for today. Load sheet or weights in LBS. Load sheet, uh, load sheet or weights in LBS. Yeah, Heading we know. Heading level two in route burn, four thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight pounds. Uh, en route burn. So that is purely from uh, you know departure to arrival. If we had no diversions, no holdings, no nothing, would be four thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight pounds. Four thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight. Passengers one hundred and eighty-three. Passengers, we've got 183 souls on board. Empty weight, 91,894 pounds. Empty weight is 91,800 and something pounds. Again, we don't really care. Empty level two estimated left W 133,984 pounds. We do care about this, so uh, our estimated uh, zero fuel weight. Empty level two estimated left W 133,984 pounds. 133,984. So I'm going to copy that and uh, just dump it in our notepad file. Simply empty level two estimated 150,161 pounds. Estimated, estimated takeoff weight is going to be 150,000 pounds. We don't really care about that either. Empty level two estimated LW 145,000. Pounds. And our estimated landing weight is 145.3, 145,300 pounds. Again, we don't really care about that. Um, you might want to take note of it and make sure that it matches when you land, especially if you're interested in making sure you're not overweight on landing. But again, Heading level two, lock fuel, 16,677 pounds. Lock fuel. Now, this is important. Field You'll notice that's a lot more than our en route fuel. Heading level two, 16, 000, 16, lock fuel, 16,677 pounds. 677. So we're going to copy that and make a note of that. Lock fuel, 16,677 pounds. Blank. All right, and there we go. Um, and it's a lot more because you've got alternate fuel there. So if you needed to divert, in, in our case, back to JFK, you've got contingency fuel, which is extra fuel in case of holding and weather. 
you've got final reserves, which is a final uh, kind of desperate measures, rainy day uh, fuel fund. Uh, and then you've even got taxi fuel, which is blind pilots we don't really use. Okay. Simpson Brief, level 2, cargo 10,065 pounds. Block fuel, 10,065 pounds. Heading level 2, payload 42,090 pounds. Payload for 42,000, okay, so that's including passengers. Heading level 2, max ZFW 138,300 pounds. Max zero fuel weight. So the estimated is what you want to go off. This is just telling you if you wanted to increase your zero fuel weight from the initial figure you were given, the maximum you could Heading go to. Heading level 2, max ZFW 138,300 pounds. Is 138,300. Heading level 2, max 174,200 pounds. And the max takeoff weight for the 737,800 is 174,200. Heading level 2, max LW 146,300 pounds. Max landing is 146,300. So again, if you wanted to make sure you were not overweight on landing, maybe you've taken some extra fuel for some reason, um, or you've not burned as much as you thought you were going to, you can check on Separate. that. But we don't need it right Heading now. Now there is the route. Heading level one link high details. KJFK slash 22 RN 476 at 290 CT. 3 KBOS slash 22L. Now I realize that's very confusing. KJFK that's slash 22 fine. RN I'm going to copy KJFK the route slash 22 RN to the notepad file. file. And I'll explain what it means in a minute. It's simply copy level one dispatch remarks. Now that is pretty much all the info you're going to need. There is a little bit more that you might need to find whilst programming. Heading level one link high details. No. Link copy. Which is your reserve okay, fuel. Looks good. So if we do an MVDA find, find and we put fin res, we can see our final reserves are 4,961 pounds. And if we just arrow upward, ALTN JFK, alternate JFK would be 4,800. Okay. So uh, we are... Um, going to take note of both of those, our alternate fuel and our fin res fuel, right, so we'll stick those below our block fuel, okay, so we've got a nice little notepad file there, we've pretty much got all the info we're going to need, okay, so we know our block fuel was 16,677, so we're going to go back to our FMC and don't worry about first officer, he's doing his flow, it's supposed to be doing it automatically, so he's doing all his stuff. Seat bulbs, window heat, blah blah blah. And we're on the fuel page, right? So, from this read only, which is the columns that I talked to you about, we've got the refresh button, the clear scratch pad button, and an edit blank box where you can type. You've got a send button, which you don't really need. And you can see First Officer's setting up the MCP there, the Air Force First Officer's setting up the MCP there, the MCP I'll talk to you about in a sec. And now he's just doing the stall test. Don't worry about that, it's just testing all the systems. You've got all these buttons for pages here, RTE, in in ref, RTE for CLB route, plus C. CLB for CLZ climb, plus C. CRZ for cruise, etc. You don't need all those right at this moment in time, but it's good to know CRZ, that they're there. Edit blank. So we're on the fuel page, we're going to go back to our edit box and we're going to type in 167. So 167. Um, six, six, seven, seven. 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 We're going to hit soft key Please, one ready. left fuel. because that is the fuel prompt. If we shift tab back, you can see space, space. if you ever want to know if it's on the left or space. right, you can space, see space, 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 by uh, looking. You, you, there's always going to be some spaces because of how it's laid out. But you can see space, space, fuel space, space, and then space, a bunch space, more space, space, spaces, space. and fuel. you can so see. There is a figure there, which is currently set to 24,999, that's just by default, we're going to hit soft key one left to insert what we just typed into the scratch pad into soft key one left, okay, and that then if we uh, refresh the FMC, which you can do with Alt R, and then go back down, let's change to 16, 677 and you can see on the right side total carriage return total lbs here we go so space l a l total lbs is on the left and then on the right we've got mtow which is the max takeoff weight so we're not paying much attention to that but on the left side is what we're interested in it's got the fuel 16677 and we don't need to look at this page much anymore we can see the level is uh, the total percentage of fuel that we've filled up level, to TOCG. Um, on the left ZFW. side, uh, which is 36.2%. That can be kind of interesting to, to look fuel at. Density. 
uh, fuel density. Um, I'm not even going to go into too much detail on that uh, right now. So then we're going to hit, uh, well, I'll show you. You can see less return. If there's a less sign, it usually means it's on the left side. And if there's a greater, it means it's on the right side. So six is on line six, and it's got a less than, so it's six left. So we're going to hit that to hit return, and that takes us back to the uh, the main FS actions page. Line four, less touchback, line three, less auto, two, less payload, maintenance, and we're going to go to something like that. Um, we're going to go to payload on two left. And then Start Star FL2. Simply, simply, simply flight briefing document. We're going to go back to Sim. Uh, well, actually, we don't need simply, simply, simply brief anymore, do we? We made our notepad fast, so we'll go rid of that. I don't normally do this notepad thing, but I thought I'd do it today just to show you how you can note down key info. We want our estimated zero fuel weight now to insert onto this Line. page. Estimated ZFW one hundred thirty-three thousand nine hundred eighty-four pounds. One hundred thirty-three thousand nine hundred eighty-four pounds. So we'll round that to say one three four point zero. And that's how you type it. I know it's 134,000 pounds, but you're typing 134.0. So we'll tap to the edit blank, which is our insert field. One, one three, three, four, four dot, decimal zero. zero. And then we're going to insert that onto soft key two right. So Alt two, or if you're using the F keys, it'd be F eight. Okay. So we've just Clear inserted spot, that, and I'll show you this page. First class GWMTOW. So you can see on line class, one, we've got information about first class. We've got again the max takeoff weights of first class, class 12, configurations of the aircraft, passengers, and whatnot. Um, economy. Uh, we've got 134 out of 158, whatever. So passengers. So obviously the passenger count isn't quite matching up with Simbrief there, but anyway. Um, TOCG. The main thing is on two right here, ZFW. ZFW, which is the zero fuel weight, and we can see if we listen to line two. 134.0. 134.0 has been entered. Cargo load level. And we can see forward cargo is on line three. three Shows you we've got 5,000. Uh, 90. 924 in the um, forward cargo. Uh, it's pounds, but again, we're not really interested. The thing on the right is kind of interesting. This is your load level of line three. Line three uh, on the right. 90.5%. Zero. Dot five. 90.5% is your load level. That tells you kind of how heavy you are, which is always good to know, especially for departures and uh, landing for to a point as well. So we're 90.5% loaded down. So we're quite heavy on this. After cargo, I think none. And you can continue looking at your aft cargo, 7,398. Other, set random greater. and then you've got less return on 6 left as before, or set random on 6 right. So you can set a random payload, but we've got ours from Simbrief, so we'll hit return. And then we'll just go back to the menu. Now we're going to go into the FMC, and the FMC is on 1 left from the menu. So we'll hit that with Control One. Open program. Three blank. And we can see some initial information Two, about our aircraft. Data, one, k. So seven three seven eight hundred. We've got twenty six k. That's twenty six thousand pounds of thrust on our engines. Nav data active. Nav data active. Always good 23. to check that it's the correct cycle. Twenty three oh seven. And we can see uh, nothing three. on line three. On line four, we've four, got zero, 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 six, nine, the uh, the uh, the program of the or the the, the software version that we're on. Five. Um, why not? Six, anyway, index, post, index, we're going to go to the pause in it page, which is on six right. And the first thing we need to do is enter our reference airport to line eight, eight, two, one, four, two. Two. So last position is on line one. one. That's the last position the aircraft recorded in uh, coordinates. Ref airport. Ref Airport, you can see here, and here's how you know again, so space R, and then so it starts very quickly, so you know it's on the left side of this line, Ref Airport, and then you can see there's nothing, we've got space, 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 so there's no prompt on the right side for that line, so we're going to go to our insert field, and then type in K, J, F, K, and hit 2 left, and that will ensure that. Ref F2, KJ, FKN, 40 degrees, 38.4, W0, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, You can insert the gate, it, but it doesn't always work, G, space, unfortunately. Um, so you can tell it we're at C20. CDU message displayed. 
not in database. And as you see, Please it's back. not in database. DBS so the aircraft has a limited database of gates, and clearly C20, KJK, C20, KJK, C20, KJK, or Charlie 20 is not in it. Ref so two, remember, KJK, three. don't worry about it. You don't have to insert that. Set IRS pose. And now you can see uh, on line space, space, or uh, right space, 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 is how we know because we've got space, 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 so many spaces for it. So the left space, 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 side is clear, space, 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 but on the right side, we've got set IRS position. So we need to set our IRS position, and that means four, inserting four, coordinates. And four, you can see four, degrees four, dot degrees dot because it's not got the current position. The easiest way to do this is to copy it from the left GPS. So we're going to hit page down. Now page down in the TFM, you'll know. Uh, you, or you'll come to know takes you to the next page so this this read only with all the columns on it and whatnot you can have multiple pages and that definitely will happen when you're cycling through your route especially if it's a long route so we're going to hit page down it takes us to the uh, the uh, page two uh, of this particular section um, and we can see if we go to line four, GPSL, four GPSL, space, space, L, space, on S. the left soft key four, G, G, space, we've got the GPS GPSL, left, and we can see it's got the coordinates uh, of our current uh, position uh, as uh, recorded by the GPS. So we hit four left to copy that to our scratch pad, and you can see it's been GPSL, copied because GPS5, it will radio, appear here six. at the bottom below our six columns. It's there because it's essentially a copy and paste. So we've just copied that, and then we go back up, so page up, to go to page three. one of the pos in it, okay? And then we're going to put it on that set IRS position prompt on four right, so we're going to hit soft key four IRS right, one. and you'll hear, as you heard, MVDA uh, read through TFM that the IRS has been aligned. That's your inertial reference system, and you need to do that so the aircraft knows where you are. Great. Okay, just clear our scratch pad with this button here. To make sure there's nothing Refresh, edit, right, left over. Blank, four, GMT, and now, if we go down the six, line six, six route, we can move on to route, which is six right. Okay. Now, all we need to do on this page is enter our co root name. So, that file we downloaded with our root uh, would be called KJFK KBOS. And because we downloaded it and put it in the right directory, the aircraft should find it. So you can Three, see on FLT, here, two, root, FLT, no. on uh, line uh, two left, two, we've got CO root, FLT. C, uh, root or co root. Just clear, it blank. So we'll go to the scratch pad and type in K, K J, J F, K, 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 B, B, o, o, S. S. So both ICALs, that's all we're typing in. Hit two left. CDU message displayed. Invalid entry. And as I thought, clear it's going to say invalid entry. CDU message cleared. Hit clear scratch pad a few times. Something got stuck in our scratch pad. Blank. So we'll do it again. K, K J, J, F, F K. K KBOS. Hit two left. Okay, awesome. It didn't throw an error, so it's taken it. Please it now, one KJFK KB origin test. You can see it's automatically filled out line one, which is the origin and destination. One KJFK KBOS. KJFK to KBOS. Zero, FLD, no. Now you can put your flight two, number two, in here on line two right. Press the scratch button. So you can put B, BVI B, uh, two. two. Well, we'll just leave it as BVI two because Delta Whiskey wouldn't actually be a flight number. So we can put that in line two right, but you don't really Please, have to do later. that. It makes no difference. Two, runway, FLT plan. You can see runway Three, and flight plan has a request thing there. You can request it through the data link, but we're not doing that. We just had it in our file system on the computer itself. We're not simulating some kind of data link scenario. Uh, Four, here. Safe. Blank, five, blank, six, activate greater. And we're going to go down and find activate, which is on six right. So we'll hit that. Execute available. Now you hear it say execute key available. This is uh, basically uh, asking for confirmation and you'll get that quite a lot when you're inserting things into the FMC. And you want to hit Alt E to hit it. Execute key hit off. execute and you'll hear it said execute key off. So you've now executed that route and you have saved it into the FMC. Right, so now we need to actually look at our route and we need to um, put in our SID and our star. So star FL2, star FL2 blank, block fuel 16,000 ALTF, finish blank, KJFK slash blank. Here's our root. So the first thing in the root. KJFK. KJFK, yes. Slash 22R. Slash 22R, so 22 right is the runway we're going to be taking off from. N0476F290. Now it says, uh, don't worry zero, about this. N this is a coordinate zero, here, N0476. 
and it but it does tell you your initial cruise altitude f290 is your initial uh, altitude which we saw in a different section of the flight plan so we know we're cruising at flight level 290 next part dct merit. dct merit now whenever you see a direct in your flight plan which means go direct to a waypoint you will see dct and then the waypoint name so in this case dct, DCT for direct direct to merit merit waypoint now normally you would see something else there you would see a SID and a SID is a standard instrument departure it's essentially a predefined departure sequence of waypoints and altitudes and speeds you're going to follow leaving an airport and it's normally a waypoint name followed by a number so it might be uh, the uh, you know the merit 3 or the JFK 2 or whatever in this case they haven't given us a SID that's because um, we're going to follow a SID that is very simple and it's just a vectored SID and I'll show you that in a minute um, but normally you would have a SID and I'm going to show you now how you go and choose your SID ACTRT, ACTRT, so we're still on the RTE route page we're going to hit Alt A which takes us to the departures and arrivals page depth slash, index one slash, one. Depth slash ARR blank one less depth page JFKA greater and you can see on one left we have a less depth KJFK and there's no arrival on that uh, line because uh, we're not arriving back into uh, JFK so we're going to hit one left to choose the less depth KJFK option right and we're now on a screen where you'll have the different SIDs you can choose on the left and the different runways you can choose on the right um, so we're going to choose a runway first blank 1 these 504 L blank 2 JFK 504 R blank 3 score 513 L Blank four thirteen R, blank five twenty two L. Okay, so it's not on this page. We're going to hit page down. KJFK departures two slash two. KJFK departures two of two, and we're going to go back up to the blank top. Three blank two blank one twenty two R. And you can see two two right is there. And as I say, runways are always on the right side. So you're going to choose right soft key one. Execute key available. You've got execute key available. Okay, so we've chosen the runway. Now we need to choose a SID. Now if Simbri had given us a SID, we could choose one, but it hasn't. Now I know. Out of uh, here, uh, we need, need to uh, choose JFK the JFK-5 departure uh, because that is the vectored departure that you would be assigned to maintain a heading until you're cleared direct to merit or you're vectored. So we're going to choose the JFK-5 on two left. Okay, and it's then going to show us transitions, although in this case there are no transitions. A transition, imagine the SID is kind of a... Uh, a, a road and then uh, the transition is kind of an intersection and then the rest of your route is kind of the main highway uh, if you like um, and if there's a transition they will appear on the left side and you will know which transition to take because right after your SID so after seeing the you know the blah blah one or the blah blah three or whatever SID you've, you've got on Simbrief's routing you will see another waypoint afterwards and uh, if you see that waypoint matches up in this FMC with one of the transitions you get on the left side, then you need to choose that transition. So you'll be flying the, you know, whatever it is, SID with the whatever transition, and then you'll join your uh, link up kind of with the, the routing on your main flight plan. In this case, there's no transition though, so we're just going to uh, execute what we've got. Execute off. Okay, and then we're going to hit Alt A again. And we're going to go on to two right, blank three, blank which two, KBOS, yeah, is the KBOS arrivals. Okay, so hit two right. Start, start, start. And we can continue looking through our sim brief flight plan. Three. And merit. we can see after merit, normally you'd have more waypoints, but this is sh such a short flight that we go straight onto a star, which is a standard terminal arrival routing, which is pretty much the same as a SID, a set of speed altitude uh, and waypoint uh, instructions to follow will take you up to your approach and we are on Robot three. the Robux 3 Space R -O -B -U -C three. Robux 3 and you can see it's a star because as I said it's got a waypoint name and then it's got a number in this case the Robux 3 okay and then after that KBOS KBOS slash 22L slash 22 left so our arrival runway is going to be 22 left so again runways will be on the right side K -K However, they will be attached to an approach, okay? So it's not just going to say like a departure, you know, 2-2 two, two left, 2-2 two, two right. It's going to say ILS, blah, blah, blah. Or it's going to say RNV for RNAV, blah, blah, blah. 
and of course as a blind pilot the majority of the time you're going to be looking for an ILS so we're going to look for our ILS 22 left JFUND 2.22 ILS 20 blank 3 JFUND 2.15 ILS 22 L there it is it's on line 3 so we're going to hit 3 right ILS 22 left execute available okay now we're going to choose our star which will be on the left side line 3 OSHN 5.22 being and don't worry about the transitions that have popped up on the right side. I'll go through that in a minute. Trans 2, JFUND 2.22B on Trans 3, blank 4, ORW 7, blank 4, ORW 7, blank 5, Robot 3.22B. There it is, Robot 3 on line 5, so we're going to hit 5 left. Sweet. Okay, now, transitions. You will have potentially transitions on the left and transitions on the right. You can have a transition onto the star from your main in-flight routing and you can have a transition off of the star onto your approach. So imagine them like little links in the road, okay? You'll know again if you have a transition onto the star because the waypoint before will match. So for example, the waypoint before our star, which was the Robot 3, the waypoint before was Merit. So let's see, do we have a Merit transition on the left side? We do, it's on line 3. So we're going to hit 3 left. There we go, we chose the merit transition. Now you'll see you also have approaches, sorry, you also have transitions on the right side. Still here, look. Blank. Three, nolly. Nolly. Trans two, merit less upgrade wrong side of printer. Trans three, blank four. Blank and that's three. the only one we've Colour. got, but you would you would potentially have space, more. Space, 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 you can see there on the right space, side, space, space is space, there, space, the line is blank space, space, until space, we space, reach N -O -L -E -Y. nolly, which is this potential transition we can choose. Now it's a bit more difficult to determine whether you should select an approach transition because you would need to view your star waypoints, okay? So what I would recommend is just hit execute on this execute key off. and then you've executed it, okay? So you've now just executed the merit transition onto the Robot 3 with the ILS 22 left, okay? A string of um, decisions you've made there. What we're going to do is just check through that routing, okay? We're going to read through it, and I'm going to show you how to read through it, okay? But we're not going to do that quite yet, because we've got to fill out some more info, but then we will look at the route, and we will double-check and see if we need that approach transition, uh, which, you know, see if it matches up, okay? If it doesn't, that's fine. We just fly straight on to the ILS. So the next page you're going to go to is the init ref page, which is right after the send button. So you're going to hit enter to go to that. This is where you actually start plugging in information about um, fuel reserves, cost index, and all that kind of stuff. Send value, please. Refresh copy, red only multi. So let's have a look. Left up two. Dot slash one. GW slash CLZ. CG trip slash CLZ. Okay. So the only thing we need from line one really is line one right, which is the CRZ alt option. I'm sorry about that, just had to take care of something. So we're going to uh, look at the uh, yeah line one right has the CRZ alt, so we need to tell the aircraft what our cruising altitude will be, and we can double check that on our fuel here. Blank, 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 C61, blank, FL 290. So it's FL 290, so what we need to type is and hit one right. The next thing we should really put in, we don't need to put this in, but we will, is the planned fuel, which goes on to left. So our block fuel, really, I guess. Um, which is, yeah. So 1, 6, 1, 6, 7, 7, 7, 2, left. Oh, maybe I have something stuck in there. Let's try 1, 6, 7. There we go. Please refresh button, plus you like it likes that better. So you've got to type it in decimal points. Plans two, sixteen point seven slash sixteen point. My bad. There you go. Sixteen point seven. So it gets confusing because on the fuel page of FS Actions, you've got to type the the full figure, but on the uh, init ref page, you're only typing in decimal points. So and then even in the zero fuel weight on FS Actions, you're typing in decimal points. It's only the fuel figure. Um, in pounds that you uh, 
you end up actually typing um, fully uh, out with no decimal point in the uh, fuel page of FS Actions. But here on the inner ref page, we're choosing to write it in decimals here. So we've got 16.7 is in there. And on line three, it's got information about the uh, temperatures. Uh, but we really need uh, line uh, three left to enter our zero fuel weight, which we already entered, of course, but uh, the plane needs to know about it in the in it ref page as well. And you can easily enter that by just hitting three left twice, so once, twice, and the plane will automatically insert it for you. So there we go, 134.0. Reserves and transition altitude are on line four. So, reserves we calculate by adding the alternate fuel, which was back to JFK, and the fin res, which is the final reserve. So we've got, let's just round it, round that to 5,000 pounds, and we'll round that to 4.8, okay? So, you basically want to add those two figures together, or was it so you're going to say 9.8, okay, is your reserves. Um, so 9,800 pounds obviously entered as 9.8. Okay, so we'll go back here. 9.8, and we'll do four left. Now that's kind of an airline SOP standard operations uh, procedure thing. Some airlines only ask you to enter the final reserves. Some airlines ask you to add the uh, alternate fuel on top of that so that the plane will notify you with a message in the FMC if you are going uh, or if you're eating into your diversion fuel um, but we'll put both in today the next thing on line 4 was the transition altitude um, it's probably going to be already set for us here at 18,000 which is the default that the FMC will always set for you if you're in Europe, that will change, and you can find it by looking at the airport's ATIS information on VATSIM or some such other ATC program, or even uh, just by uh, knowing the, uh, the the genuine the general uh, transition level, which is usually about 6,000 feet, but it can change. But in the U.S., it's always 18,000. Same with Canada, I believe. So you know, it's um, it's fine to just leave it at that for this flight. Transition is where you'll switch from using the local pressure on your altimeter to standard pressure, which is obviously 2, 9, and 9, or 2 uh, on the uh, inches uh, mercury and 1, 0, 1, 3 on the Q and H if you're from Europe. Okay. Next thing you're going to need to enter is your cost index on line 5 left. So we can look right here. Uh, CI return. CI, which cost index was 61. Uh, okay, so we'll type 61, hit 5. And you can see we've filled out the uh, the the, uh, the init ref page because the execute keys become available. So we'll shift tab. Reserve for cost index and it's complaining now that it's enabled the CRZ altitude and you heard GFM read that, that is a prompt sent by the plane and we can see it below the column enable CRZ alt. Let's just check this page first. Now TFM seems to have an interesting quirk where it will always put a random 4 in your cost index, um, at least for me. Uh, so I'm going to hit clear and just type in it again, 6, 1, 5 left. Uh, now we should be 61, request 61, there we go, we've now got the cost index in, um, and we should be good, I think it was because it was such a high cost index, it was on 461 that the plane was complaining, but now we've got 61 in, which was correct, and we will hit execute, key off. Uh, execute, uh, execute key off, uh, let's see if the plane wants to complain about the cruising altitude, no it doesn't, so it's good, okay. New notification from WhatsApp, beginner slash. And uh, apologies about that. Okay, so now bottom, we've got index. The index page, by the way, is kind of like a uh, your root tree, uh, root tree view of the, the whole kind of uh, wider tree view system. So you can go to the index to view all the pages 
on the uh, in it section of the aircraft uh, but we're just going to go to the next page by hitting six right which six, is the one limit n1 limits page so it kind of goes in sequential order you know we, uh, we can just keep hitting six right and cycling through this here so the n1 page again has stuff on the left and right and this is essentially the thrust ratings you're going to choose so there are predefined ratings. Three, so for example, two, SLSA, K, one, slash plus Celsius, slash well, on line one, for example, here, this is kind of the the first thing you can choose, uh, which is to change the temperature. So some people will adjust the temperature depending on what it is outside. So you know it's currently seventy five degrees, 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit outside the aircraft that was with uh, right bracket O. And you can actually come in here and adjust the temperature that you're basically uh, telling the plane uh, what temperature it is and that will then adjust the amount of power that the airplane thinks the engines can safely produce um, but you don't need to do that uh, if you use, you use a, a takeoff calculator you'll get given a selected temperature to put in um, so you can pretty much leave that alone and it will adjust itself based on kind of the the, the conditions but if you want to play around with it, try some higher and lower temperatures you can and you'll probably see a difference in the engine power rating. But on line 2, 26K. you can see 26K. That is the maximum amount of power on a regular setting you can choose on this airplane and that's the takeoff setting. And the CLB setting for climb is on the right side. So we have to choose a takeoff setting and a climb setting. 24K rate. 24k D rate, so that's 24,000 pounds of thrust on line 3. 3 less one CLB, 22K rate. And we can do a 22k D rate, 22,000 pounds on line 4. And then the 27k, as I said, the maximum on the regular setting is 26, but bump is a special setting five, less B. on line 5 uh, left, which will give you the absolute max power you can get out of these engines, which is 27,000 pounds, not used really unless you're on an incredibly short runway. Um, so you have to choose one from the left and one from the right. On an average runway, three left and three right will do you just fine because it's TO1 and CLIMB1, which is a standard 24K. That will do you just fine. If you're on a really long runway, you might do line four. If you're on a really short runway, you might do lines two uh, or, or TO on line two and then uh, possibly even bump on line five, depending on what you Okay. So, um, we'll just choose hit line 3 left, which chooses TO1, and we'll hit line 3 right to choose climb 1. So we've chosen the specified takeoff and climb thrust that we want. So we'll hit 6 right now to go to takeoff. This is the page where we have to enter some more information, so you have to enter your position on the left side and you've got a V1 on right soft 1, one V2 on line 2 uh, right and then on 3 right you've got V2 V1 being your reject speed so the latest stage you can reject at VR being your rotate speed when you should start rotating and V2 being the speed at which you should be lifting off and also the speed at which your aircraft can be uh, kind of uh, you know safe if you have an engine failure uh, normally you might do v2 plus 10 and on line 3 left you've also got to insert your CG which is your center of gravity and in the middle column you've got the trim value you need to set okay so we need to enter our flat position normal flat position for the 737-800 is flaps 5 for takeoff on extremely short runways you might use 10 or 15 on extremely long runways it has been known to use one especially in the 737-700 but on the 800 and certainly the 900 you're always pretty much going to be five so we'll put five. five in there one left we'll hit three left twice to insert our cfg and just like the uh, zero fuel weight on the nrf page Please, it right. gets automatically inserted from what the plane has available GW3, GW3, 25 .7, you can see the right lines, or the, the right columns on the lines, uh, have been populated. So we have a V1 of 141, 142 on the VR, and 150 on the V2. 
So we're going to hit one left, two left, and three left to accept those speeds and to uh, basically uh, confirm to the airplane that yes, we're taking those speeds. Now I mentioned the MCP. The MCP is essentially comprised of, of various items, the main ones being your heading, altitude, and speed. Um, they are areas where you can not only set those values, but there's various buttons that you can adjust what systems are controlling the, uh, the values um, when the autopilot is on. You need to make sure that your MCP is set before you depart. So on the speed, you can hit left bracket S to see what you're currently set to. MCP speed 100. And it's currently set to MCP speed 100. If first officer's already set it for you, great. If not, you need to hit left bracket shift S. MCP speed. Indicated S speed must be selected 100. Okay, and we can type a new speed. We'll just type our V2 speed, 150. Hit enter. 150. And we can escape out of that. You can see there's other stuff in here. So intervene, which is to intervene on the speed. That is uh, useful when you're in VNAV mode. You can see you've got indicators, auto throttle, N1 selectors. Okay, but I'm not going to go through all those right now. Well, hit escape out of that. If you hit left bracket shift H, you can uh, go into your heading box. And we can MCP see what it's set. Plus selected 271. It's 271, so it's actually uh, not um, set the runway heading uh, correctly. Uh, if we go to our legs page, which we can hit with Alt G, and this will show us our full routing now that we've completed it. Okay, so this is set out in the format of uh, Alt columns and on the left side you've got the heading of the next waypoint and then on the right side you've got the uh, distance that you can see uh, above each line so this first one is above line one so it shows you from the, the essentially in this case from lift off to the first waypoint you have got uh, 224 degrees, 224 degrees and uh, it's a 1.6 nautical mile leg so we know our runway heading is 224, so we're going to set 224, hit escape, okay. And we also need to do our altitude, so left bracket A, MCP altitude 21,000 feet. set to 21,000 feet, uh, start FL 200, forms dot main column flows, start FL 2619, estimated blank, block fuel 60, ALTN, finish water blank, KJF, K slash 20, KJ, KJ blank, finish water 961, ALTN, block fuel 60 blank, estimated blank, blank, C61 blank, FL 290. Yeah, 290, so first officers said it wrong, I think that's because it pulled the wrong sim brief plan actually, it pulled the plan from, uh, from last time, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just, uh, type it in here, 29000. Okay, and enter, and that's now set up in our MCP. You can see there's other buttons intervene, here. Again, intervene, altitude intervene, just like speed. You've got V now, and level change modes. If you've read the PMDG manuals, which I would highly recommend, uh, or at least some of it, you'll know what those modes do. Um, v nav essentially and L nav are vertical and natural navigation, and they basically fly the route automatically for you. Level change is a bit more manual, it just uh, maintains your current speed. Uh, by uh, pitching the aircraft uh, with no uh, real regard for any sit and start or whatever restrictions. Um, so we can escape out of that and we can keep looking through this route. So line 2, we've got a heading of 224 degrees HDG, so there's no distance on this. And that's because it's a vector waypoint. Now on each waypoint line, um, so, so obviously, as I said, you've got the heading and the distance above, but on each waypoint line, you'll actually see the name of the waypoint, in this case, vector, because it's a vector waypoint, which is essentially a waypoint that's uh, inserted, it's not actually a fix in terms of a VOR or any kind of real physical waypoint that exists in the real world, it's just a, uh, an inserted, uh, uh, you know, automated waypoint that's actually just going to put you on a vector. Uh, which means you're going to maintain a certain heading, in this case 224, which was the runway heading, because as I said, uh, this SID is just a, a vectored SID. Two vector, you can 200. see it says two vector 170 slash 420. That is the speed and then the altitude that you will be at, according to what the airplane estimates, okay? So it's estimating we'll be at 170 knots by that point, and we will be at 420 feet. If we go down 0, 0.45 degrees 55.4 nm, 0, 0.45 degrees 55 nautical miles, 
Okay, to this next leg. Three, merit 317 slash FL 225. It's merit, as we saw in our flight plan, and we can see the airplane is estimating what we have. 317 slash FL 225. At FL 225, which is flight level 225, so 22,500 feet. Okay, and we can keep looking through this. 0, 95 degrees, 42.1 M. Okay, then we've got another 42 miles. Four, minus 308 slash FL 210, FL 230. To four, carriage, space, carriage, four, colon, space, R, U, I, Z, E, space. Ruiz or Ruiz, uh, which you can see on the left side. And then you can see it's got a restriction. This is actually the start of our arrival, our uh, star. Zero four, Ruiz 308 slash FL 210, FL 230. So FL 210230, that means uh, it's a restriction and it's saying you've got to be somewhere between flight level 210 and 230. Keep going down. Zero seven eight degrees, 10.5 NM, five, all in 308 slash 17,000 A. Okay. Space, 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 N, I, L, W, A, space, A, W, L, I, N. All in, okay, and we can see it estimates we're going to be at 308 knots. Five, all in 308 slash 17,000 A. And 17,000 A means 17,000 or above, okay? Page down to go to page two. ACTRT legs two slash five. Two slash five, so we've got five pages of route. Zero zero two zero one zero eight two three six point four NM one back to three hundred and eight slash sixteen thousand A. And I'm gonna keep going through these again, another sixteen thousand A. Zero eight two three thirteen point six NM. Two Robert two hundred and sixty slash twelve thousand FL one hundred and ninety. There's Roebuck and you've got to be between twelve thousand and flight level one nine zero. Zero eight two three thirteen point six NM. That was uh, another thirteen miles on a heading of zero eight two. Two zero eight three degrees seven point four NM. Three probably two hundred and sixty slash eleven thousand A. That one is 11,000 or above, and you can see the speed is 260. 074 degrees 7.4 4 NM4, 260 slash 13,450. And that one uh, is showing you uh, line 4 as being 13,450. That's because uh, there's it's following the restrictions. The one above only said you have to be 11,000 or above, right? So it can still be above. 074 360 slash 13,450. 074 degrees 8.4 NM. Okay, 0748.4 miles. 5, cram 250 slash 11000, 12000. Okay, so that's cram. We've got to be 250 knots between 11 and 12. ACTRT legs 3 slash 5, 303 02 01 074 degrees 18.6 NM. 1, CRADL 240 slash 800, 1000. So cradle 240 knots between 8,000 and 1, CRADL 240 slash 800, 1000. 10,000. 062.8.8 NM. 2, CLEB 250 slash 8,000. Cleb 250 slash 8,000. 026.13.3, FM 250.5,000. slash 5, Again, another waypoint, 250 of 5,000. 336.9 NM, 4, PTRIK 220.5,000. slash 5, PTRIK was uh, to 5,000 as well. 0, 3, 4, 3, 6, 3, 8, 5, Tagel 210 slash 5,000. Okay, Tagel 210 is 5,000, so there's a restriction there. We've got to be all the way back at uh, 210 knots. ACTRT ELEX 4 slash 5. Okay, page 4. 201, vector 210 slash 5000. And there's another vector 0, 3, 5, point, as you can see. 0, 3, 5 degrees, okay. 0, 3, 5 One, degrees vector. 200. vector. Now, mm. that means, remember earlier when I was talking about, oh, I wonder if there's a transition onto the approach from the star, uh, because there was a transition available, but we didn't know if it matched any of our waypoints. Well, now we know it doesn't because it is a vectored star. So at some point, if you had ATC, they would start vectoring you onto the ILS. Uh, we're not going to uh, get that, of course. Um, so line two. 244 degrees 8.92. Wayne 199 slash 3000 A. Is Wayne e -E 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 or something like that, uh, which is. Uh, space, space. Two. Wayne 199 slash 3000 A. 199 knots, uh, 3000 A, 3000 or above. That is where we will pick up the ILS. Now, we don't really, uh, you know, need this vector because we're flying offline. So we're going to leave it in for now. But uh, you're probably going to want to, when you get to the arrival, fly on that vector for a couple of miles, and then eventually you're going to go direct to Wayne here, and then you'll pick up the ILS. And to go direct to a waypoint, all you need to do is move it up. So you do the copy-paste trick. So if we were going to remove the vector, let's imagine we're going to get rid of this vector, we don't need it. We'll hit line 2 to choose Wayne, and we'll hit line 1. To paste it over the vector waypoint execute key and we get an execute key we'll hit execute, execute and now we can see the vector is gone and wayne has moved up to line 223 degrees at 12 so miles three. and it's still complaining actually that it's unable cruise altitude so we might have to go and change our cruise altitude so that would be an interesting demo One, wayne, 199 slash Okay. And then 214 degrees. 214 degrees. 4.9 nm. 4.9. To the final waypoint. And then the final leg. Goes to RW twenty two L. And by that point, pretty much by 
you'll be capturing the ILS. Now it does say 3000 or above. I recommend at least at this waypoint pretty much setting a new speed and altitude. So we don't want it to tell the airplane, oh you can be above 3000. Because remember if you uh, know anything about aviation you'll kind of know that we're supposed to be capturing glide slopes from below. Right? You don't want to be chasing them from above. The glide slope is the vertical navigation uh, section of a uh, uh, ILS uh, in uh, combination with the localizer, which is the uh, lateral. So we're going to go to the scratch pad and we're just going to type, uh, let's give it a new speed as well. Let's type 160 slash 160. 3,000 feet. So we're telling the aircraft, hey, you need to be 160 knots, and I don't want you to be above 3,000. I want you to be dead on 3,000 feet. Okay. By that point, you'll be in speed intervene mode anyway. So VNAV probably won't have control of the speed. You will be controlling it because really, at that point, it's better to actually be entering speeds manually, especially you know kind of around 3,000 feet. But anyway, we're going to tell the aircraft that, and then at least it'll know we need to be at 3,000, and it'll know we intend to be at about 160 knots. Okay? 160 knots is maybe a little bit slow, but if you're a beginner, then slower is better. Okay, it's just going to give you more time to prepare. So, to insert a new instruction for any waypoint, and you can do that for any waypoint, you can type in a new speed and a new altitude, okay, but just make sure you don't bypass restrictions, is to hit one right, okay, which is the right column of the uh, Wayne uh, waypoint, which is on line one. So we'll hit right execute one, and we'll hit execute. execute. There we go. And if we go uh, refresh with Alt-R and then go CPU message displayed. Unable CRZ Still complaining on able CRZ altitude, so uh, we'll go sort that out. Wayne 160 slash 3000. Wayne 160 slash 3000. If we keep going down, 243 RW22 L slash 69. We've got runway 22 left. Now you might notice there's some waypoints after the runway, and you're probably thinking. 215 degrees TRK 0.5 NF3. 215 degrees TRK 0.5. That's telling it to follow a track of 215 degrees and to follow it for. 0 0.5 miles. 420 slash 420. And we'll be at 420 feet there. 14 degrees 15.7 nm. Then it's got a 214 degrees at 15 miles. Five, Winnie slash 3000 A. To Winnie at 3000 A. You're probably thinking, what the hell are those? Those are the missed approach waypoints. So every time you insert a specific approach, even if it's a, an ILS, uh, there will be a missed approach uh, procedure that's associated with that. Okay, and that will go after the runway. So if you need to fly the missed approach procedure because you botched the approach. It's right there for you, and the airplane will fly it on LNAV just fine, and you know what altitude you need to be at. Let's hit Alt-G for legs page again to take us back to page one of our multiple-paged uh, uh, legs section. The legs page is probably where you're going to spend most of your time as well. And we're going to change our cruise altitude because it keeps complaining about 29,000 that it can't make it up there. To do that, we're going to hit Alt Z to go to the cruise page, which is also associated with the CRZ button that you can find over here. If we keep tabbing on the CRZ Alt Plus Z, you can see CLB is Alt Plus C. So all these different pages that you can find buttoned on TFM's that you can find buttoned on TFM's interface also have associated hotkeys. Now we're on the cruise page. If we want to change our cruise altitude, we can simply type it in and insert it onto one left. So we'll try uh, 25,000. So 25000, zero, 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 zero. Zero. one left. Execute, execute, execute. And hopefully it will not complain at us and say, oh, we can't make that uh, cruising altitude. Okay, so we, we changed that. That's because it's such a short flight. Simbrief obviously gave us a bit of an overly ambitious cruise altitude. So we'll hit Alt G and go back to the legs page. Okay. Now, the last part of the FMC programming we need to do is to put in that wind data file that we downloaded to tell the FMC all the different winds and the different waypoints. Okay, zero, nine, and you can zero, see five, down at the bottom of RNP the next page, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, on line 6, you've got firstly your RNP, that's telling you your RNP accuracy, which is a 0 0.07 nautical mile, so incredibly accurate uh, on the uh, GPS. But you've also got root data on line uh, 6, soft key 6 right. So we're going to hit 6 right, 
this is actually a useful page in the first place because it shows you the times that you'll arrive at all these waypoints. So maybe you're wondering, okay, what time am I, am I going to arrive at Merit? Hey, here's Merit. Zero one zero one Zulu. Zero one zero one Zulu. So you'll arrive at Merit at one zero one Zulu time if you were to take off right now. But the thing line we're interested five, in, if we keep six, going down to line six, 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 is there is a request option on six right. Mm -hmm which is associated with this winds prompt above line six. So we're going to hit six right and just give it a minute whilst it requests the wind uplink from the file that we downloaded. And this is going to insert the winds for all the waypoints. Left FMC light on, right FMC light on. Cruise uplink ready. So now if we refresh the FMC alt, I'll go down. If you're running the newest TFM, which is not released at the time of this recording, you might not have to refresh the FMC nearly as much as I'm refreshing it, okay? Uh, because it will auto refresh. But uh, I am having to refresh it whenever a new message pops up sometimes. Blank four, blank five, RT six, let's load. There is a load on six left because there is a less than sign. We can tell that. So we're going to hit six left to load the uplink that we have just execute key got and uh, execute key is available. So we'll confirm it with Alt E. Excellent. So we've now uploaded the cruise wind, and it immediately tells you forecast uplink ready. Now that's talking about the descent forecast uplink. Um, we'll do this now, but if you're on a longer uh, flight, you might want to redo the descent forecast uplink when you get a bit closer to your destination. So we're going to hit Alt D to go to the descent page. Okay, again, associated with a button on TFM's buttons panel if you want to click that instead, but we're hitting Alt-D. Now, this page has some interesting stuff FPN on it, which I'll show you, but the majority of it is not really relevant until you're in Three, flight. One, east -flight so, top of descent altitude, uh, or, or so that's telling you basically, uh, I have no idea what it's telling you, maybe that's the mileage, but we don't need it. Slash D, slash D, E slash D alt, I have no idea what that is, we don't care about that right now. Target speed, showing you here, so 0.76 is the MAC that it will initially target, uh, 0.761 if you want to be precise. Three. Slash eight, three eight, zero eight knots. So you can edit that if you want to and give it a new speed target on descent, but that's what it's calculated based on the cost index. SPD rest WPT slash alt three two hundred and forty slash ten thousand slash. That's talking there about uh, what uh, speed restrictions it will have, and obviously the main one it's got programmed in is two four zero at ten thousand. Uh, so you could give it a new restriction there. You could tell it at ten thousand. I want you to be two twenty or something. Because obviously, by default, uh, VNAV will always slow you down past 250 knots uh, by 10,000 feet because it's such a hard rule in aviation, pretty much wherever you are. FPA, B slash, B slash, four. This is the FPA and that is going into extreme detail and uh, about the you can even enter the degrees of nose pitch you want it to maintain, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to go into all that, it's just way overkill. Five. Blank six less forecast on greater. And we're going to go to less forecast, which is on six left. Okay, and we can see here Blank four degrees slash KT. Degrees slash KT. So these are all our waypoints Blank three, here. Degrees slash two, two, one hundred and ten FPM. Three, Blank four. Blank five. Degrees slash KT. But none of them have degrees slash KT, i.e., none of them have the wind degree and strength. Six, load greater. So we can simply hit load on FMC, six right. Blank, FMC, right. right. Okay. And then hit FMC, FMC, right on, right FMC, execute. Right on. And we've now given it our descent winds. You can be more specific as to which altitude you want the aircraft to maintain. For 15,200 FL 250, 215 degrees slash 39 kilotons. So you can specifically go in here. slash QNH 2, 14 degrees Celsius slash alt wind slash SPD. Alt wind, so you can go in here and you can choose 250, 15,000, 6,000. So you can go in here and change these, okay? So the descent forecast by default uh, will begin at uh, 25,000 feet, okay? So if you decide you want the descent forecast to begin earlier, maybe 35,000, you could change these altitudes on lines uh, 3, 4, 5, 
but for our purposes we'll just leave those as default in terms of what altitudes is drawing from to calculate these descent winds because our cruise altitude starts at 250 or 25,000 anyway okay so perfect we've now got our descent winds we can go back to our legs page and that's important so the airplane can calculate the most efficient VNAV uh, and lateral path possible so now we're actually all set to go and start running some checklists. So, let's go to forms here on uh, for software, and we can run the pre-flight checklist. Pre checklist. And we can just let him run through Oxygen. and make sure there's Testing. nothing that Navigation stands out as being switches. wrong. Normal and auto. Window heat. On. Pressurization boats electric. Auto. Flight instruments. Heading set altimeter set. Parking brake. Set. Fuel control switches. Cut off. Checklist complete. Okay, so there's nothing there. He said heading set and altimeters are set. So that means we have set the uh, altitude. One thing you might remember is we changed that cruise altitude. MCP altitude 29,000 feet. So it's still on 29,000. We can go left, bracket shift A, and come in here. It didn't open and, or it didn't throw the focus to it, so we'll just shift tab. Altitude 9, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Find Microsoft RFL, MCP, ACT up forms to altitude 9, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Microsoft RFL, MCP altitude columns, ACT RT, MCP altitude columns, hold off button, level change off button, hold 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 button, from what Simbrief gave us, ACTRT, one side. and that's now going to be the altitude we'll level off at, 25,000. If you were on that sim or something, you'd get given an altitude, but we're just going to go straight to cruise since we're offline. Now, we run our pre-flight checklist. The next thing you might want to do is make sure your doors are closed. So if we go back to menu with Alt-M and then 5 right for FS actions, you can go to line 3 left. Or low, yeah, line three and then softly three one, left. Round two, water three, less doors, cruise printer. Less doors, so we want to go to doors. Hello two, hello one, less close door open, door printer. And you can see here we've got columns with doors on the left and doors on the right. Uh, so we've got, for F example, F the left entry F on F the space, uh, R, Y space R, carriage return R, F W D entry L, carriage return L, space L, space 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 space. So the left entry e there and then F the F FWR, entry FWD, forward return, right. One, less close door open, so door we printer. can see that the left entry is open, so I'm just going to hit one left to close it. One closing open door printer. And it says closing, so that's now closing. Two, less open door open. Hello three, less open door open door printer. And there's a whole bunch here. You've got overwing Esther. exits. You've got air stairs. Four, you can extend. Blank. Blah blah blah. Anyway, that's the door closed. That's fine. Okay, perfect. Another thing you might want to check in your aircraft is go to the the menu again and then hit four right with uh, which is uh, a PMDG options. Okay, you might want to go in Start here. Three blank two panel one less aircraft space greater. and go to aircraft which is on one left, okay. One, less equipment and then go to equipment which is again on one left because it's less than okay. And you might want to go to line four two, GS3, less auto land. and you'll see auto land four, less fail OP. and it's on fail op. This is uh, a lesser known but kind of useful feature. So there's two different kinds of auto land systems: the fail pass and fail OP or fail operational systems. If you have it on fail pass, if one autopilot fails, your uh, plane will not be able to auto land. If you have it on fail operational, if one fails, the other should continue on with the auto land, which obviously for us blind pilots, since we do auto land, quite a bit is pretty important. So you might want to make sure that is checked. Three, You'll three, see three, then two, online two, take one, one here, MC type. MCP type, Honeywell, slash Collins. Honeywell or Collins, so Honeywell slash Collins, and wherever the X symbol is, and this is the case for quite a few things on TFM, including when you're in the services window looking at uh, chocks and things like that, which first officers should manage, but you can look at yourself. Uh, the chocks are the uh, kind of uh, locks on the wheels. Wherever the X is, is which one is selected. So in this case, we can see. Carriage return. One. Less Honeywell. Honeywell space, space, H -O -N -E -Y -W slash e -L -L space slash space X, X space Collins. So we're on the Collins MCP type. Just two different manufacturers of the MCP and avionics, but uh, the uh, fail operational uh, does require the Collins MCP to work, I believe. Not many airlines have that, but for us blind pilots, that kind of MCP and uh, uh, fail operational is useful. Right, with that, we'll throw it back to our legs page. That was just a bit of a tangent there. Uh, it can be useful to check that stuff out. And there's a whole lot more you can change in the configurations in the PMDG options. So uh, once you've mastered all this stuff, you know, you're on a log there because you can change fuel tanks and seats and um, 
all kinds of equipment. So you can change the standby instruments from analog to digital, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Right, we're now ready to perform our start flow. So we'll hit enter, and he is going to start up our APU. And he's going to adjust the fuel pumps as well. Now, TFM has panels. You can access them with left bracket control P. And it didn't go focus again. So we'll just panels move it. Level zero after expand, level one to one to one. And you've got a bunch of stuff in the aft zero panel. Zero one to one to one. After over. Zero one to one to one. Zero one to one to one. Level EEC one to one to one. Oxygen one to one to one to one to one. Flight protocol one to one to one. Level zero after electronic collapse one to one. After electronic. Forward overhead. 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 All this stuff. So the, what I'm saying off. is, you can start the APU via the panels yourself. You can do pretty much everything first officer is doing yourself. However, as a beginner, it's far easier to learn how the first officer is setting up the aircraft, and then maybe start following some real-world checklists and start learning where things are on the panels. I'm not going to go over that today. That's from another video. Right now, we're going to let the first officer do his thing. And as you can see, if we go to the outside view, he is starting the APU. He's now switching over the generators, so we'll no longer be on ground power in a second. We'll be on APU power, and he will manually get rid of the ground power. There you go, you heard there, and the bus transfer to place, which is transfer to APU. He's turning on our hydraulic pumps, and he's also turning the packs off. He's doing the lights. The reason he turned the packs off is because they need to be off for engine start. And that is, there you go, you heard him there tapping on the CDU and he just got rid of the ground power. He's also going to get rid of the chocks. And uh, yeah, the um, the packs are basically uh, devices, you know, uh, pumping air into the into the cabin, the, uh, the recirculated air and you know, Left part of the pressurization off, system, system the whole off. wider pressurization system, but they do need to be off for engine start because we're going to need all the bleed air we can get. So now we can go ahead and do a pushback. So we're on it's gate okay, Charlie 20, and we're on a heading with right bracket H heading of 49. 49. So we can push pretty much in any direction. Usually you would kind of maybe try and push in the direction of the runway, which would be in our case uh, runway 22 left uh, was the heading of 224 that we set. MCP, 224. But we can't really do that because uh, we can only really push 90 degrees kind of in either direction. So can't really, you know, get smack bang on. Uh, maybe we'll push to the left. That might be best. But anyway, it doesn't too much. So we're going to go menu, alt M. We're going to go... Uh, Five right for FS actions, and then we're going to go to the pushback, which is on line four left. Let's push back. There we go. Let's push back. There we go. Hit enter on that. Three turn nose. Two now, push style units. Push style is on line two left. Two left straight out. And it's currently on straight out. We want to push the nose to the left, so we're going to hit the uh, push style unit two uh, left. Two left standard L feet straighter. And it's now got standard. Okay, we do want the standard, but then we want to go down you to line. Know, Three turn nose, turn nose prompt. Three right, and we've got the three which is on right, three left. So we're going to hit three left soft key once to turn the nose to the turn left. Three, left. That's now on left. Degree C O M M S four ninety. We can adjust the degrees. We'll just leave it on ninety degree turn to the left. Four nine chocks select tug. Chocks and select tug. The chocks are already released. Five, slash, uh, as you can see, the X there oh, here is space, 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 X e, removed. Oh. So the chocks were already removed. But we do need to select a tug type, which we can choose on line 5 right. So we'll hit it and we can refresh the FMC and then go back to line 5. Four, select five. Let's start TPX 200 greater. TPX 200 is selected. That's perfectly fine. That's the default tug type. And you'll see that line 5 left has now select changed five. Start TPX to greater. start. So we can hit start. Cockpit to ground. You can hear he is radioing us. Go ahead. Ready for the push. For push and start. Tail to the right. So tail is to the right because the tail is the Coming rear of the aircraft. The nose right. is to the left. That's the front. Okay, he wants us to release the brakes. So to Microsoft do this, Flight I'm going to hold Flight period, which is my uh, brake pedal key to hold it down. I do have a key on my joystick, but for argument's sake, I'll do it on that. Um, okay, so I'm going to hold it down, Martin and then I'm going Martin to press 
Come on. Yeah, there you. we go. You have to hold it down for quite a bit of time, and then it will go off. If you struggle with it, you can also turn on voice within first officer. Here, go to the menu. Buttons. Voice. Hit that, make sure it's on. And then you can ask first officer parking brakes on, parking brake off. So if you have trouble with it, do that. Or you can change your uh, parking brake settings within the PMDG options where the equipment is that I showed you. It's somewhere in there. You can change the parking brake from uh, realistic to simple and that should help you out so you don't have to hold down that pedal. So we're now pushing back and you can see that by right bracket U for the ground speed. Two knots, ground speed. It's to two knots and you heading can see 49. our heading, heading should in a minute begin to turn. Heading 47. There we go, 47. Heading 45. So we're turning to the left and pushing back. Microsoft pushback, PXR FL 290, notepad column 445. We don't need the pushback push push page open on the FMC, so we'll hit Alt G to go back to our legs page. Microsoft, star FL 290, we'll go to first officer. Start engines button. Start engines and we'll hit the start engines button. Again, start something you can do very easily, actually, really, from the panels. Um, there is a good video that was, uh, someone made on that uh, that I uh, think is linked on bvipilots.net. So the PMBG tutorials, it's rather simple to start the engines yourself. It's one of those nice things you can do manually. Um, you can see he's now uh, adding fuel because we got to uh, number two starter engaged. Number two fuel. Number two generator. The, uh, the, uh, the engine EGT number two is on. correct. So yeah, you can do that pretty easily, but we'll let him do it today. You can hear the first engine is powering up as we're pushing back. Number two, start off. Push back complete. Parking brake set. Okay, so we need to set the parking brake. So we're going to hold down the brake pedal again. Brake set. And then I'm going to hit my brake set key, which is control period, as I said, and then the brakes are set. You can hear engine two is now started, and he's now starting engine one with the same sequence. So he's setting the engine to ground. He's going to wait until the EGT rises, and then he's going to add fuel. In a minute, you'll hear the switch flick over, um, and the pushback tug driver is now leaving. There we go. Okay. Listen to this from the outside. If you like. you got the custom views in involved, you can switch over to cabin view and. Enjoy the nice sounds. Anyway, number one, start off. Number one is shortly going to be fully stabilized. Yeah, and he will uh, tell you. You'll hear the cutout switch, and then you'll hear here the engine first officer tell you. And he also you sets the to... engines to auto. Engine one cut out, and then in a minute he's going to report that they are stable. All engines stable. Right, they're all stable. Now I should add, I forgot to mention this. Remember that approach transition I was talking about. So we had the star transition, which was uh, merit onto the robot. Uh, three year star. If there was an approach transition, so if you remember the waypoints we saw on the right side of the arrival page, if we remember one of them and there was a, a transition that matched up, um, you can redo the arrival at any time. So even now, if we look through that legs page and we saw a transition and we thought, yes, there should be a transition point uh, because we see the waypoint, um, you know, the, the, the you know where the transition should begin um, then you can go back to the arrivals page with alt a and then uh, to right um, to go onto the the arrivals page for your airport and you can redo it so you can put the approach in again you can put the star in again you can do the star transition and if you remember hey there's an approach transition you can go and do that on the, the right side choosing it from the right column and then execute that and then you'll have the approach in with the correct transition and that, that, that's, that happens a lot during flight. You might find that the winds change and you figure, okay, uh, I'm looking at the winds and they've changed so uh, this runway is no longer a viable option, okay, I'm going to go in and change. You may well find that that does happen and then you go and redo the arrival like I was saying. Now, 
Um, some people use FS Tramp as a program, not just for the freeware planes, but also to view their Check approach the transitions. And that is an understandable way of doing things, but I understand that you as a beginner are probably not going to be doing that. So don't worry about that. Just look at your legs page and see if you can find a transition. If you can't find one, because it just doesn't look like there's any waypoints there that match for a transition, or if, like in our case, you just see a vector, then that's fine. There is no transition. Uh, you just get rid of it. You might even find that you get a root discontinuity. We didn't have any of those. A root discontinuity is essentially the aircraft saying, hey, this doesn't quite look right between these two waypoints. It doesn't match. The root doesn't match. And if you want to get rid of a root discontinuity, you do exactly the same thing as we did to get rid of that vector. You take the waypoint below the discontinuity line and you move it up as though you're going to copy it and paste it over that discontinuity. And then you close up the gap where there was that discontinuity by doing that. And you're just going to hit execute easily and then off you go. Okay, you've closed the gap, you've got rid of the discontinuity and your flight plan will be good to go. So you might find that on an ILS approach. Each ILS approach is different. Never be uh, afraid. You know, if you've got this far and you're, you, you're kind of interested in, okay, how can I best uh, look at this ILS approach? Or is there a better a approach I could be doing, you know, in terms of is there a transition? Then never be afraid to ask in one of the groups or whatever. Someone can take a look at the approach and let you know. But as you get more competent, you will feel more confident with the uh, looking on that legs page and going, oh yeah, okay, I remember that waypoint there. There is a transition there actually on the approach. I remember that. I'm going to go in here and uh, re-put the, put the transition in, okay? Another thing you can do is look on the Simbrief plan. That does ha uh, have a detailed nav log of all the waypoints. And I'll, I'll show you that now, actually. Uh, this is quite advanced, uh, so don't worry about this, guys, if you're brand new. Uh, but if you go back to the flight plan on Simbrief, I'm going to go to Dispatch, and then I'm going to go to View Flight Plan to view my last flight plan. Okay, past all these headings, these nice headings, you've got your full operational flight plan, which is in the uh, complicated Lido format for those old timers who might remember viewing that without the nice heading layout. If you scroll down, you get to a point here where you've got all your weights. So it'll show you DCT, because it's direct, merit, okay, but if you keep going down, it starts showing you Robux 3, and it'll show you all the waypoints. That's TOCN, which is top of the line, and it also shows you the coordinates of the waypoint on the line below. So we start out Robux 3, Ruiz, yes, remember that, Orlin, Banky, Top of Descent, Robux, Probe, Judy, the destination airport. So if you want to really look at the last waypoint on the uh, the star easily, you can look on Simbrief here, and you can see it's Talek, and there was no transition under that name, so there was no transition we can take, and we knew that anyway because we had a vector. Okay, but don't worry about that if you're if you're new. That's just a tip. If you're getting pretty advanced, you want to you know look. You don't have to use Tramp. You can look at the uh, table that Simbrief provides you. Okay. Right. right, so we're now good to go ahead and do the after start flow, and he's going to switch us over to engine gen power instead of ATU. He's also going to turn the packs back on, he's going to do a bunch of stuff here. Now, sometimes these flows would be done automatically, and then they are you know, often associated with the checklist, so we didn't actually do the before start checklist, which we should have done, but those checklists are really there if you want them, they are not necessary, they just go through various items, which pretty much all of them should already be done. He's going to set the flaps as well, okay, and it's complaining about verified takeoff speeds, and then it will get rid of that message. If you see that message, uh, when the flaps are coming out, that is a PMDG bug in Microsoft. Same thing with the message you heard when he said check the doors earlier. That's also a bug for first officer. 
it is not correct, the doors are closed. It is nonsense, you've already pushed back. Okay, the flaps should be set and you can always check them with right bracket L. Flaps 5. There we go. So yeah, if you have the automatic flows setting on, it will do these flows automatically when you run certain checklists. For example, when you run the uh, before start checklist, um, sorry, not the before start, when you run the, uh, the pre-flight checklist, uh, after that checklist, you should, if you have auto flows on, start the APU. He's essentially doing the before start flow after the pre-flight checklist because it goes in sequential order. But I don't have that on because I prefer just to tell it when I want it to do the flows. Okay. So we've now done the after start flow and we have no before takeoff flow, but we do have a before takeoff checklist that we need to run. Before start CH, before start flow, pre-FLT, CH, pre-FLT flow, edge weather, select, flow, So I'll show you all here. This does not, so after start flow, unselected. That shows you there the most recent flow that you've done. Uh, you can see we've still got access to all the pre-flight stuff here if we need it. Before start flow, before start, after start flow, after start, there's a taxi checklist again, not necessary, but we can do it if we wanted to. Uh, it does have some useful stuff on it. For example, to test out your flight controls, it'll report the state of your flight controls. It'll ask you to, to move them full left, full, full right, full back, full forward. Um, so you can check them. You don't have to do that checklist again if you don't want to. It's kind of up to you. But either way, we do need to do the before takeoff. Before takeoff checklist. Okay, and because he's going Flaps. to Set. check stabilization some stuff turn. here, Set. checklist complete. There we go. He's going to turn on our lights. Now the other thing I didn't touch on was the trim, and you'll remember we saw trim in the um, takeoff page. Now, if ever you want to get back to that page, so I don't normally set trim to the value that the PMDG says because my joystick is really sensitive. If I set trim up quite a bit then it will often cause it to jump uh, or to, to really violently pitch up quite a bit. But you can set trim and to be honest with you, you know, it's, it's definitely a good thing if you're heavy. If you want to get back to that page, you go to the init ref page and remember that index page that I was telling you about you here on the, uh, the main in invest page per minute, right? If you want to go to that kind of main tree view page, which is on index six left, you can hit that, okay? And then you can go to the takeoff page on four left. And this will take you back to the final page we had where we were entering the flaps to five, remember, and we were doing the CG. This also on line three has CG and then trim in the middle column. Three, four, 96, so so we can see here, the first value is our three, colon, space. CG. 4 .96, Sorry, yeah, here we go. Three. Line three. 25.7% is our C of G. 4.96 in the middle is our trim. If you've got a trim wheel, you can use that on the honeycomb or something like that. If not, uh, then you are going to have to use, well, let's uh, see, we can use TFM here, that might be nice. It uh, doesn't matter what hot key you've got to sign then. Control stand, collapse, one, level zero, stand, level one, CD, you want to one, trim one, one, level one. Elevate trim, indicator four, all plus T. Elevate trim is four, if we hit U, it'll go up by five, okay. 4.06, 4.07, 4.08, 4.09, So we can hit it. U, U, 4.U, U, U, 4.19, 4.26, 4.28, 4.3, 4.31, elevate trim. So yes, you can do that, or you can use your trim wheel, I'll show you that. Four point eight, four point seven, four point nine one. A lot quicker. If you've got a trim wheel on the honeycomb, way easier. Uh, in some ways, um, yes, you can set your trim. If you tend to find that your takeoffs, you know, pitches up really dramatically, then uh, that is uh, probably, you know, your sensitivity on your joystick, which can be difficult to adjust in Microsoft. So, uh, because it's not a particularly accessible dialog, you might want to try setting a lower trim value. So now we're actually ready for takeoff. Um, we're going to reposition to the runway. To do that, I'd hit escape to pause the simulator whilst I reposition. 
so that we don't get any erroneous kind of um, bounces as we spawn to the one way. Uh, so we're going to type K, JFK, 8 runways loaded, 8 runways loaded, 04R, 13L, 13R, 22L, 22R, and it was 2 2 right, so we hit enter. We've now jumped to the one way, so we'll hit escape on the sim again. So unpause, and we're now on the runway as we can see. With right bracket shift C. Runway 22 R at KJFK slash 12,078. There we go. Now, for the takeoff, we need several things on. We need runway guidance mode. Runway guidance enabled current heading 224. If you've got that set to uh, tones, which I highly recommend over the beeping, uh, sorry, over the speech, uh, but the speech will also work. If you've got it set to tones, you'll hear a tone in your left ear if you start drifting left and you need to apply some right rudder and vice versa the opposite way. Uh, if you've got it on speech, you might hear left one, left two, right one, whatever. Again, you need to apply the opposite rudder to keep yourself on the center line. Okay, the other thing you're going to need is attitude mode. Attitude on one. Um, now, for attitude mode, I would highly recommend having it on speech, uh, unlike runway guidance, which uh, has uh, tones. I'm not actually sure if runway guidance has speech. I can't honestly remember. Uh, but uh, runway guidance is beeps, I think and uh, that's really how you want it, but certainly attitude mode has the option to change between beeps and uh, uh, or, or really just a, a single tone and uh, okay sorry about that guys, my headset uh, died for a second um, has the option to change between uh, tones and speech so uh, attitude mode is going to tell you also kind of whether you're going left and right, but it's more used when you're in the air. Uh, but it's also going to tell you if uh, you are pitching up and down by how many degrees. So we're going to turn that on with right bracket, left bracket. Attitude mode disabled. So it disables it, turn it on. Mode enabled. There we go. Runway guidance, right bracket, control H. Runway guidance disabled. Again, disabled, so I'm just showing you this. Guidance, enabled, you go. The other thing you might want to do is read, uh, is stop the trim reading. You can set that by default, I believe, but if you do right bracket shift T, read trim, disabled. read trim is disabled because the trim will start to be manipulated by the autopilot as you climb when the autopilot goes on and it will start to get a little bit uh, spammy. So other than that, you're now ready to take off, and that will be for a whole other video. Um, you're going to roll down the runway, you're going to rotate to the rotate speed, and you're going to uh, you're going to try and keep the nose at about 10 degrees nose up, anywhere between 10 and 15. As I say, attitude mode with its speech will read that to you from. TFM and uh, yeah then you're just going to go gear up and hopefully first officer will put on the LNAV and VNAV modes if not then as I showed you you can put them on yourself in the altitude heading boxes and make sure that the autopilot goes on i.e. command A is also what the first autopilot's called there is a second one command B uh, just for contingencies so either of those can go on it doesn't really matter but either way uh, you're now ready to take off and as I say that will be for another uh, video so I will uh, do the, uh, the, the uh, well I actually do this whole flight uh, in another video and just show you what I am doing and you can try and follow but hopefully you're able to follow this this is the most complicated bit I promise you that and the landing although the, even the landing there's less to program it's more about managing the energy of the airplane, whereas this, there's a lot to program, a lot of information you need to get, uh, some brief and input, and we've only just scratched the surface, right, as I said, there's a lot more you could program, there's a lot more info you could get, etc., there's so much stuff, okay, but as a beginner, you will learn that kind of as you go along, but as a beginner, this is kind of the basics, what do you need to input to get the FMC working, to get the flight plan imported, and to be in a position right now where you can depart, okay? So I hope that was helpful. Questions always in the comments. This may vary depending on if you're running, uh, you know, P3D, there might be small variations, although generally the CDU is pretty much the same. And obviously I can't guarantee that uh, PMDG won't update the uh, CDU uh, firmware representation that they're running, and then it might change again. 
there's a lot more you can do with the CDU. It's a very clever thing, actually. Pretty, pretty crazy what it's running off of if you want to investigate that in terms of the amount of memory and stuff. Um, but it can do a lot of stuff, crazy, uh, you know, stuff. You can add new waypoints to it that are fictional waypoints. You can create root offsets and all this kind of stuff. And maybe I'll do a video on all that. There's a lot you can do with this thing. It's very smart uh, and a lot of untapped potential. But the very basics, the uh, the quick and dirty, what you need to put in, well, that wasn't all that quick, I know, but you'll get quicker at it, I promise. I can program and CDU, I don't know, God, about three minutes flat if I had to. Uh, three five minutes and I'm sure a lot of people can as well so it's you know you could probably do it in your sleep when you've done it for years but uh, this is kind of just takes a while in the beginning so best of luck uh, if you go wrong try it again feel free comments and in the uh, various groups thanks for watching hope this was helpful